Welcome back guys. Today we're going to tackle the problem with the sun shining and not being able to actually utilize all energy. Having massive amount of solar power is something that we all need to deal with in one way or another. Some people sell the energy to the grid, some others they just waste it. Of course there are some people already have a device that can divert the energy to something else. Today I'm going to show you guys how you simply can utilize the energy from the solar and with some simple devices actually being able to divert the energy to something that is really really fun. So today let's build a solar diverter on the sheep I would say. I have my water heater inside the tank here and as you can see I have hooked up a wire. This wire currently goes to a plug that I pull in and out. I'm once again bringing forward my trusty box with Sonoff devices. So let's see what we have today, what we can use. The four channel relays are a little bit too big. The power itself, it's a neat little device that actually can do power measurements as well. If not, I could always go and use the, the TH16. This one is 16 amp rated. And today I'm actually going to use the Sonoff power. What I'm going to control is actually drawing around 2000 watts, slightly below 10 amps. So hopefully this will work just fine. So what my idea is, is to take this box, tie it into it like that, and that should make it a little bit neater and also protect the wiring a little better. It is a little bit tricky to film in here, but what we should be doing today is to actually pull out from this wire in here. I have 10 amps going in and that's what I need. This outlet is only for this equipment here, so there's no draw at all. So I will connect the cable into th from this one to the actual heating system, so let's do the wiring for that. But before we do anything inside here, let's disconnect the power. So let me go and pull the plug. The screen should go black. It's now black in here. So let's do the work and disassemble everything. And make sure that we actually can insert the new wiring. The cable I'm going to use is this one here. As you can see if you count the number of wires, it is five and that's because this is a three phase wire. If you saw earlier, the heating element itself is actually three different elements. In the future I will disconnect or change this to actually a three phase configuration instead where I can turn off one, two or three phases, depending on the lowest load per phase. But today we are focusing on one load and one phase only. But still, I'm going to add them all up so they are here. Uh, but for today, as I said, I'm going to skip two phases and therefore I cut off two of them and I don't hook them up. I'm going to have a little bit extra wire here, so this will not be a problem later on.
basically I have hooked up all three faces, made sure that they don't have any contact with the heating elements itself, and they should be good to go now. As you can see now, this one turns on and it works. So let's try this one out. It turns on and it turns off. So that's really, really good. So let's take a look at Node Red and how we set up the flows. Firstly, here is my power flow overview where you can actually see all the wattage going to my houses and back and forth to the power wall itself. Currently we are drawing quite a lot from the battery and the solar is fading out because it's late in the evening. So let's go to Sonoff and see about how it looks currently. As you can see here I have configured up the Sonoff itself to talk to the MQTT server. You can also see that it is currently toggled off. If I toggle it on you will see that the wattage immediately raises. Currently, as you can see, it will toggle off again, and that's because I have some logic in behind. So let's go to Node Red. In Node Red, I have already configured a simple flow. So let's take a look at that. If you have any suggestions of a more complicated flow or how you would do it, don't forget to comment down below on what you want me to do to show you. So currently, we are doing every five seconds, we are sending a timestamp. It doesn't really matter what you send because every five seconds we trigger this function. The function itself is not very complicated. I do have the state of charge already saved in Node-RED and that's because I am actually getting the values from the Batrium in another function. I'm also getting the values for the power usage for the house and the garage and totaling them up. The same goes with the shunt wattage, I'm getting that from the Batrium as well. So what I do is that I do an if case that where I check as long as the state of charge is above 95% and the total usage in the house is then 1500 wattage. You have to read this the other way around because this is minus here. And as long as the battery uh, wattage used from it is below 2000 watt, we will send a message with a payload of 1. That is basically that we are going to turn on the sun off that is controlling the heater. If any of those aren't true, we will turn the heating element off instead. Over here we have the connection to the sun off itself. I'm going to connect to the topic called CMND. The heater one is the name of the sun off in this question and the power. And that's where this is getting sent. So currently, as you can see here, this is triggered us off. And that's because one of those you can see here is not true. If we go over to the power flow itself, we could potentially see that, yeah, we are drawing power from the battery quite a lot. And now we're not drawing anything. And the house is ca calmed down. So you can see this is flipping back and forth. And the reason for that is that it is currently switching the sun off module back and forth on and off as you can see here so the function is working though it should have some more histories in built into it of course uh, that is a matter of actually tweaking this here so if i go in here and add 2800 wattage instead we deploy and we go back here and check it out we'll see if we trigger above that or not it is slightly below, so now it should stay on for at least some time. And this value here should also raise, as you can see, that means that the guest house where this heater is located is actually turned on. And if we go here, we can see that it is on. I have a little bonus that I will add into the description down below, and that's this part here in Node Red. The first one here is a very generic function where it takes all the sensor data and parses it into InfluxDB. 
The second one is taking all this generic states and parses those into the influx the DB. This one is rather simple and currently only contains two different types and that's energy and or the DS18B20 sensor data. You can of course add as many as you want here and just continue to use it and it will still send the data into influx database with a rather simple layout. So if you have any suggestions on how we can make this even better, don't forget to comment down below. If we head to Grafana, I also added two elements here that actually shows me when the solar dip is on and how much wattage it's currently drawing. So this is just a simple way of actually visualizing what's going on in Grafana as well. And that is based on the values that you saw down here where I send the data to Influx database. So guys, I want to thank you for watching this video. If you have any suggestions on something that I should do next, feel free to comment down below. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you soon again. And thank you for now. Bye.